Welcome back to the program Power Tea Night with Elvira. Andito po ang crew ng Power Tea Night dito po sa Cebu City kung saan po ang former Supreme Court Chief Justice Hilario Davide agreed to be interviewed. Bakit po siya ang napili namin of all the people who come here, you know, from all walks of life? Because I think we should learn something from him, his life, his dedication, his career, and at the same time, his friendship with his late eminence emeritus, Ricardo Cardinal Vidal. Thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed in this program. Alam niyo po, since I met you sa New York, nung naging ambassador yeah, mm. po kayo, it has been a dream on my part to be able to interview a Supreme Court Justice. No? You know, I always believe si Cardinal Vidal always trusts government. Parati niya sinasabi sa akin, importante ang dialogue, importante ang diplomacy. You know, kahit sila ay inaatake na ng tao, we have to bring them back. Yes. You know, the role of the church is to unite. No, yun ang parating kinikwento niya sa akin. So, ang bago tayo pumunta sa relasyon mo kay Cardinal Vidal, you are very close to him. Importante din po malaman ng taong bayan, ano pong background nyo bago kayo naging Supreme Court Justice? What inspired you to become a lawyer? No, You must be a lawyer before. Yes. So who inspired you and the role of the faith? No? Bakit na in spite of being a judge, being a lawyer, bakit hindi nawawala sa puso ninyo ang pagmamahal sa Diyos at nagagampanan ninyo ang role ninyo with the guidance of the Holy Spirit? It will take a long time to go back to our source. Yes. We decided, I decided to become a lawyer simply because uh, I was born of poor parents in okay. a very remote uh, barangay in Argao, Cebu. And the people uh, looked down upon us, uh, people from the mountain areas. Talaga. So I decided to take up law to be able to help uh, the depressed people, the underprivileged. So when I graduated from uh, the high school, I decided to go to University of the Philippines to take a pre-law at Diliman. And so, and uh, because of my devotion to serve uh, the people, especially those deprived uh, of justice, the oppressed, uh, I uh, decided to practice immediately. And 60% uh, of my cases, I practiced for 28 years, uh, Elvira, 60% of my cases are all pro bono to help the poor. Okay. Uh, the, those uh, uh, persecuted by politicians, especially in Cebu at the time, Mm -hmm. when uh, we had political dynasties and people uh, were so divided. So I decided to at least be able to contribute a lot uh, in uh, helping them. And uh, eventually I decided to serve in the government because I know that it is in government service that will be able to reach out to many people. Uh, it became a passion for me to help. Okay. And then uh, came uh, Cardinal Vidal here. Uh, when uh, he was uh, appointed as coadjutor, uh, as bishop, and then later as archbishop, our connection with the cardinal uh, had been very, very tremendous and uh, unf unfathomable in the sense that uh, he did influence at a lot, uh, including Mrs. Davide, when we were in the government service. Mm -hmm. So the key then to help and to be able to reconcile and establish peace would be really to always ask for the help of the divine, uh, of the, uh, divine and guidance and of course, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, understanding, counsel, and uh, wisdom. Yes. So we could approach many things. Why choose to be a lawyer when you can also help the poor <laughs> by being a doctor or, you know, or any other you know, uh, career? Why choose to be a lawyer when it, it takes a lot of time to study, to build yes, this, so you know? To me, uh, the law profession is uh, among the noblest of the professions. And the opportunity for service is much wider okay. because you always see justice at the end. Okay. And justice will demand uh, a lot of uh, virtues, uh, righteousness, uh, uh, integrity, uh, broad-mindedness, patience, uh, perseverance, uh, and above all, self-control. So I think uh, the scope of justice would even cover uh, almost everything, even in medicine. The justice would come in. So I was a very good lawyer, 
especially in in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the examination of uh, doctors uh, when there are cases involving uh, homicide, murder, and so on. To be a lawyer is very wide, you know, aspect. So, ano po ang specialization? Ninyo? My specialization at the time was uh, criminal justice. Ah, criminal. Yes, because this is much broader than anything. Uh, not like civil law, uh, corporate practice. Uh, there are many oppressed people. And uh, when you talk about uh, the underprivileged uh, sectors, they clamor for justice. Yeah. Uh, they can afford uh, to stay without even a doctor. They can just be using uh, herbal medicine at the time. But when it comes to law, and you have a judge uh, before you, you have a fiscal before you, it will demand a lot of patience and sacrifice. So how do you survive? Because I remember you mentioned you, your parents were poor. Then you took up law. How do you finish your law when your parents are poor? And then how poor. can you survive helping the poor 60% uh, you know, with pro bono? Uh, that was an inspiration as a matter of fact. Okay. At that time, we had to take up two years of pre-law. Okay. And then four years of regular law. I was a working student for five ah, years of my okay. six years yes, yes. in the University of the Philippines. I was assigned to a dormitory, the UP North uh, Dormitory, and uh, I worked hard. I was assigned to a graveyard time, uh, so I could study also while working. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, I, we, uh, our life is very simple. So we have a lot of uh, areas in Kolawin, for instance, my barangay, uh, we plant. We used to do a lot of planting, and my parents would even prepare planting materials every time that we are on a vacation. Okay. You said uh, to do the best service to the government, you know, is really to be involved with the government, especially you uh, specialize in criminal justice. Yes. You have helped a lot, and this is something that we will not earn money from that. <laughs> when, in the bar, unlike those business or corporate lawyer, malalaki po ang But the satisfaction nila, no? is uh, mm -hmm. much better when you render service without expecting a reward in terms of money. So that was the happiness that I had. It is the fulfillment, the passion for, uh, the passion for work and the passion to help. Mm -hmm. So when you started already, uh, sup uh, judges ka pa lang, sa Court of Appeal or? No, I didn't okay, pass no. the Court of Appeals. Uh, so how, then how? President Cory Aquino uh, appointed me directly to the Supreme Court. Ah, so you she did not go to the level? Yes, yeah. I, uh, it is not a career uh, uh, path that I followed in the judiciary. Okay. Uh, after I left the, uh, the, court of, uh, the Commission on Elections, because Corey appointed me to the Commission on Elections in 19, 1988. Yeah. So you started there? Uh, even before. I was already a member of the Constitutional Convention of 1971. Ah, okay. And I headed uh, the committee with the longest uh, name, the Committee on, on the Obligations of Citizens and okay. Ethics of Public Officials. Okay. I had a chance, really, to contribute much, laying down the foundation for uh, Serban leadership. Yeah, that is 1971, no? the Constitu 1971. Uh, Constitutional oh. Convention, yes. I remember oh. that. So that's oh. a very good and wide experience for you, you know, and your contribution already was already <laughs> very historical at that time. Oh. Then Commission on Election, that's another, you know, thing. Uh. Did you stay Very challenging, long? all challenging Different uh, kind because you are dealing government. now with politicians. Oh. You know, when you said Commission Election, mostly are politicians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how do you keep to become very saint you know, is <laughs> alam ko po ang dami dyan na nagsisip-sip, you know, especially when there's a cases of sasabi nila ng daya. How do you, is it because of you, you met already Cardinal Vidal, remind me? At that time, yeah, not, not yet. yet. Uh, I met Cardinal Vidal for the first time, I think, uh, early part of 1982. Ah, latter uh, part of, Immediately after he was appointed uh, the coadjutor. Uh, 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 so, latter part uh, 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 na. Uh, uh, so, yung pagiging commission election was earlier ma, than ma, that. Uh, During yes. the revolutionary government at the time, no? No. no not uh, yet. In 1971, it was a regular government, and that's why there was uh, constituted the co constitutional uh, convention precisely to uh, review the 1935 uh, constitution Session. for okay. possible amendments to make it uh, uh, more uh, more uh, appropriate uh, for the Filipinos. Yes, yes. So, nakatulong din naman po yun, di ba? Oh, definitely. So, yeah. As so, a matter of fact, uh, 
except for certain provisions there, which was influenced by which were influenced uh, by the dictatorial rule already of uh, Marcos. We were overtaken with the declaration of martial law, and some of the provisions there were, uh, you know, it is it is a game of numbers when you are in the constitutional convention. So some provisions uh, 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 crept into the pro, uh, into the constitution itself. But basically, especially for the Bill of Rights and uh, the organization of the various organs of the government, it was a good constitution. Mm. But then I was appointed by Kauri to the 1986 constitution. Ah, so another well, one. Yes, yeah. uh, formulated our present constitution. And to me, it is the only uh, constitution in the world that is pro-God, pro-people, pro-poor, uh, uh, pro-environment, uh, pro-life, pro-marriage, pro-family, pro-women. Pro youth. So it's, we can say it's a very holistic approach. Very holistic no? approach. So a lot of ingredients yes. were already incorporated. Well, as There's, a matter of no. fact, I would say it is divinely inspired, the Constitution. Mm -hmm.